It starts with an awesome face flattening ascent. Within seconds, I'm thousands of meters above Amberley Air Base near Brisbane. Oh, that is amazing. Hurtling towards the sound barrier. Oh, mate, that's like being on the end of a missile. It's a rare but stomach turning treat. Yeah, I'm glad the sun's up there in the sky. It's the only way I can tell whether I was up or down. This is the front line of Australia's new generation Air Force, the FA 18 Super Hornet. So they're supersonic now, so we're My pilot, Dan down. Greeley, takes me through the lock. Now. Yeah, right now. Barrel rolls. Oh. Flip the loops. That's it. Yes. And low level swoops. So this is Cape Morton, we're passing on the right. When you... It's not until you get down this low to the ground that you realize how fast these things can go. Technically, this fighter can do 1.8 Mach, or if you like, almost twice the speed of sound. To put that into perspective, that's over 2,000 kilometers per hour. Performance is frightening. We've paid $6 billion for 24 of the Rhinos and taken delivery of the first 12. They're state-of-the-art seek and destroy killing machines. But fighter pilots like Dan Greeley have one simple rule. Kill the enemy before they can get to you. And this thing does that in spades. It does it in spades, you know. The jet is just tailored perfectly to what we need it for in the RAF. Does it very well. One of the most competent jets in the world. And yeah, I'm really glad we bought it. Fighter pilots are an adventurous breed. It's a very small and exclusive club. And only the best of the best are chosen to fly the newest aircraft in the fleet. Can I catch? Do you want to catch me? Yeah. yeah. Right. But squadron leader Greeley says it's not so much a club as a close-knit family. In fact, it's where he met his wife-to-be, Flight Lieutenant Catherine Jay. Thank you. Kisses. Catherine, is a fighter pilot a unique breed? There are a unique set of characteristics, obviously, otherwise everybody would be able to do it. So yeah, I think there are special traits required, but uh, as I like to remind Daniel, that they are just people too. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine brings you down to earth pretty quickly. She does. You can tell who uh, holds the rank at home. <laughs> Dan and Catherine were amongst a hand-picked Super Hornet transition team chosen to go to America as the new planes came off the Boeing production line. There were test flights at an air base in California. Then the long flight home. First to land was the squadron's commander, Glenn Braz into the waiting arms of his daughters, Eve and Beth. Luck may have played a part, but Glenn always had the need for speed. He was raised on the New South Wales north coast, near an RAAF bombing range, and dreamed of flying F-111s. He ended up commanding the squadron that flies them. Oh, look how big that corn is. Now that he's a dad himself and nearing the end of his flying days, it's his job to oversee this revolutionary change. In with the Super Hornet and out with the much-loved F-111. Is there any other Air Force in the world still flying F-111s? No, we've been the only one since about 96, when the US Air Force retired their jet. 111's been a great servant and a great jet, and we'll farewell it with reverence. Even after 37 years, it's hard to understand the affinity these men and women have with the old F-111s. Lovingly nicknamed the pig because its nose points toward the ground. 
navigator Adele Merriman explained that unique relationship better than anyone. It's what we fly in every day. It's, you know, you sit in that thing and, and you go 600 knots. So it's part of you. You Once you strap yourself into it, you're strapping it onto you, essentially. So, you know, you're all part of that jet once you, once you take off, so. And you're relying on it. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're flying to the best of our ability, but we, we need it to be doing its job as well. So we, there's a, a bit of a bond there, if you can say that, between a piece of machinery and people. But, yeah, it's, it's really good. When the F-111 flies into history, Adele and the rest of the crew must form that same bond with the Super Hornet, the Rhino, an American nickname the Aussies have adopted. Her new job will be Weapons Systems Officer, or WIZO. She and the pilot can each fire missiles and drop bombs and do it simultaneously. So you'll be the pilot's second set of eyes? Yeah, essentially we're providing that extra brain, extra set of eyes and hands to, to do, you know, what he can't do. So you'll go from pig girl to rhino girl? <laughs> yeah. I'd call that a promotion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably, some would say, but, you know, I, I love the pig, and I'm sure once I start flying the Super Hornet, I'll love that just as much, but I always have a soft spot in my heart for the F-111. <laughs> just get you to close your mouth, hold your nose, and... We weren't allowed to film inside the cockpit or show the plane from certain angles. Clearly, there'll be uh, some things I won't be able to show you there today, but we can talk around those issues. They Have did say the that, that the crown jewel of the aircraft it's is its new generation radar. But yeah, that's as far as they go. Let's get into it. We're in the next one over here. Right. But you only have to talk to pilot Dan Greeley to know whatever they have got on board has got them pretty excited. This particular jet, I mean, you, you don't like it, you love it. I do love it. Yeah, it's got so many different and new characteristics to the old one. It just makes it so much more enjoyable. We headed for reserved airspace off the Queensland coast, well away from anyone. It's so incredibly responsive, isn't it? It's then Dan let loose and showed me what his new toy can do. Now we generally stay at low level if we don't want anyone to see us. But we're in a super hornet land. We want to be up high and fast where people can see us because we can shoot them back anyway. So we fight our way into our target, kill everyone or push them out of the way, drop our bombs and then fight our way out. So that's how we do business. Oh, the manoeuvrability is amazing. And if anyone tries to get the jump on him from behind, he's confident the Rhino's extreme manoeuvrability can get him out of trouble. All right, I'm going to go to the left, so I want you to go ahead and start doing your pins. You ready? Yep. Yeah, here we go. G, and then he's shooting at us, so we want to get into manoeuvring. And you see the way the jet is just whipping around the corner. In the space of 30 seconds, he dodged a missile and positioned the plane behind the enemy to fire one back. It's phenomenal. An air to air engagement can be totally complete in less than a minute. So you have to use everything at your fingertips to kill him quickly, otherwise, he's going to kill you or his buddy's going to kill you. Well, you've only got one chance, haven't you? That's right. It must be comforting for a pilot to know he's got a better plane than anyone else in our corner of the world. Just as the long-range F-111s were commissioned when Indonesia was considered a threat back in the 70s, the Super Hornet will again make us the toughest kids on the Asia-Pacific block. Now, the Australian public will want to know more than six billion dollars, 24 planes, but how will they make us any safer? Uh, this jet absolutely makes us safer. It gives us the immediate power and edge to dominate. Now it's up to the young men and women of the RAAF to deliver, to ensure that our six billion dollars is money well spent. Thanks for that. That was great. The Air Force says with the best planes and the best pilots, they're confident of that. It's, it's very easy to fly. Anyone could fly an F-18. It's operating an F-18 that's the tricky part. Well, I hope you never have to fly in a war zone, but if you do... Uh, you... Well, if you had to go to war, it would be a great machine to go in. 
I'm confident of that.